Yeah. Do you remember Bragg's Law? Yes. What does Bragg's Law say? 2D equals n lambda sine theta. 2D equals uh, uh, 2D sine theta equals yeah. n lambda. That's right. So, so backwards. That's if you're on a laboratory X-ray diffractometer, you have a single lambda with its wavelength, and that hits the sample and is scattered through various angles. And then, in order to scan D, the D spacing, you move your detector to different scattering angles. The theta is half the scattering angle. Well, it's different for time of flight neutron diffraction because a white beam hits the sample. White means lots of different wavelengths, and uh, they, that the beam is scattered up into lots of different angles. But you can keep your detector at one single scattering angle by using the time of flight technique. Uh, time is related to wavelength, so by measuring the time of flight spectrum. You are scanning through different wavelengths because they come at different times. So you can measure pretty much the whole diffraction pattern at one single angle with a stationary detector. Unlike a laboratory X-ray diffractometer where the detector moves around to different angles. In fact, I do have a laboratory X-ray diffractometer in, a, in the Tiger Station 2 building. We'll take a look at that in a minute. You may have seen it before. This, uh, however, is GEM, which is the instrument under our feet. I can't show you it in reality because we have to go in a blockhouse inside the shielding and uh, people are doing an experiment so they won't be happy if I open it up and stop their data acquisition. To open it up I would first have to put a shutter into the incoming beam, which is a big block of steel which is wound up and down by one of those electric motors on top of the time station. <laughs> so I would disrupt their experiment if we so we're not going to do that, right? Anyway. The neutrons come in here, which is like from over there, and then this is the sample tank. The sample gets put in a hole here. Uh, the sample is inside this tank, which is a vacuum chamber. We can actually see it down here. So if you look in here, you can see is on the top of this hole. So the sample is on the end of a... Uh, no, it's actually in a furnace. The sample is on the end of a kind of stick which holds it in the neutron beam. Please have a look at the So. The majority of the neutrons go through the sample or pass it and carry on going and they go into a beam stop, which is a huge bulky piece of material. But those neutrons which are scattered they fly out in all different angles, all different directions. And then you'll see we have lots and lots of detectors all over the place to detect the neutrons. We add up the, the signal from all these different detectors to get our final fraction pattern. I just told you how we have a stationary detector we can collect the whole fraction pattern with just one stationary detector. That's true, but the, uh, the uh, intensity is weak. So in order to get good intensity, to get good statistical accuracy on our result, we actually have lots and lots of detectors we have the top side. Uh, so the color coding, that, that's uh, the highest energy ones, are, uh, are backscattered or is no, it...? No, this is actually uh, angle. So this is a very small scattering angle, this is just 1 to 3 degrees. The backscattering, 142 okay. to 171 degrees. So the colors had nothing to do with like no. the, the... Well, it is, it is roughly speaking rainbow, if you look. Yeah. But it, 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 it indicates the uh, angle. Right. Uh, Not it really. It doesn't indicate energy. Okay. No, no. The same energies are used at all different angles. Okay. I, I like using the rainbow uh, color sequence just because it's a well known sequence of colors. Right. That we all know. That's 
kind of unpleasant out because it's noisy. So when you do an experiment you come in here <laughs> and it's a little bit more pleasant. Right. So computers to control the experiment. And in here, this is all the electronics. We have more than 7,000 detectors so we need a lot of electronics. Each oh, detector okay. generates not just one signal but a whole time of flight signal. So it measures the number of neutrons counted on the y-axis against time of flight on the x-axis. So each detector, we, we measure about 5,000 different time of flight channels. <laughs> so each detector generates a spectrum of 5,000 points. There are 7,000 or more detectors. You see it adds up to a lot of numbers, <laughs> a lot of electronics. OK. Take a look for you. Oh, right. Oh, thank you very much. He was very relieved when he found there was only one piece of paper from all these samples. Yeah. Well, that one's for you, which go with the samples. Is that what happens? Oh, okay. yes. You didn't seem to know. Yeah. Uh, can I leave that on with you so it goes with the head on one? I'm happy to unload yep. it. Yeah, uh, okay. But it should go with it. And once you get back to the university, it's up to you what you're doing with the paper. But, um, <laughs> so, for our hospital, keep them or no. display them. I don't think so. <laughs> 